Hello, everybody. I am stoked to be here today with Jimmy Rose of Content Snare. Welcome, Jimmy, to the show. Say, I am so happy to be here. Excellent. I enjoyed myself so much when we had that big extended chat for your podcast that we just decided to just turn it around and do the same thing. Uh, so to all of our listeners today, we are going to be digging into the topic of automation, which to me is like this like magical thing that I always want to leverage as much as possible, but <laughs> feels like a foreign language to actually implement. Uh, so super stoked to have Jimmy on the show today to talk about just things around automation automation. How do you automate things? What are some low hanging things you can automate? Is Zapier the only way to do it? We're going to dig into a lot of things. But before we get into that, James, uh, I have a question for you, which is what would you say your superpower is? Oof. Um, honestly, it is automation. I feel like that is the one thing that when I focus on it, I just love it and just keep going and kind of go overboard a little bit. Um, so being able to see how things fit together, that's always been like a big part of my life. I think even from early days. Awesome. So what I'm hearing is that it's kind of the, the pieces and the puzzle of putting it together that you really like, but I'm curious, why does the world need what you do? Why does the world need more automation in it? Cause everyone's doing too much work. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Can't uh, argue with that. <laughs> yeah, like agencies are especially uh, bad at this, and uh, I, you know, I hit a point in my agency life where it was just ridiculous. Like I was, like most agency owners do, take on too many things, saying yes to too many things, um, don't have good enough processes, and it just kind of. For me, it hit a point. Like a, I don't know what the word is, but it's just I, a breaking point, nearly. You know, and I strangely enough, hadn't done a lot of automation before that point, even though in a previous life I was an automation engineer. Um, and that after that, it was just like, okay, I need to save as much time as possible. Um, and honestly, the turnaround was massive. Awesome. So I, you know, when I think automation, I mean, as a marketer, my brain immediately goes to email automation, but I know from experience that it just goes like so, so, so much further than that. So can you break down for us, maybe just like a few simple examples of what automation can do and how it could change something for a digital leader? Yeah, sure. I mean, the easiest one that everyone can uh, recognize, this is the problem with automation is that everyone's do using different tools, has different processes. So it's kind of hard to be like, here's one thing that everyone understands. But uh, con the, the classic contact form to CRM is just the easiest example of automation ever where someone comes to your website, they fill out your contact form and you want to put those, that person or company into your CRM. Uh, you know, there are still people that get the email from like contact form seven or whatever it is that sends you an email notification, uh, and then they copy it out and put it in their CRM, you know, like that is just not something that you should be doing manually. <laughs> Okay. And uh, that makes a lot of sense to me. This is in fact why I absolutely adore automation, uh, even though I'm not necessarily the best at it. I'm good at it in my head, you know, but then when I get the technology in front of me, I'm like, you do what? You have to do what? Uh, so I'm curious, you know, I've played around with Zapier. I know Zapier is the tool that gets, uh, you know, talked about quite a bit. Uh, you mentioned there's a lot of different like tools and platforms. For someone who is kind of looking to get started or, or maybe like deepen their appreciation of automation, would you recommend something like Zapier or is there something kind of easier you would recommend? Yeah. So automation is just a massive field, right? Like I just gave one example there, which was a, a contact form, but you know, a lot of people like, just like you will go to marketing automation as uh, the default. And, you know, to an extent I do now, because I talk about Zapier so much that becomes my default. But to me, like productivity and automation are kind of intertwined a bit. Uh, you know, like for example, text expander is a tool that I use that enables you to create snippets or like little keyboard shortcuts that um, expand into bigger blocks of text. So that could be like just my website. Um, you know, like I press like dot W is, is expands into HTTP colon slash slash content snare.com. Um, and you know, you can put whole emails with placeholders and stuff in there. To me, that is still automation. Like that's big in the like quote unquote productivity world, but that's a kind of automation. Um, 
it really depends which rabbit holes you'd like to go down <laughs> on this uh, talk. But Zapier is definitely my weapon of choice when it comes to like workflow automation. That's probably the category I'd put that in, uh, along with things like Integramat, which is a Zapier competitor that is, it looks nice at first, but is so much more complicated for someone who's just starting out. So I would definitely not recommend starting there unless you're pretty technical. It's more powerful than Zapier, but um, super technical. And like if I was designing a new a UI, it would never look like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, also, I can't design, but <laughs> I just wouldn't make it. It's just way too complex. Um, you know, if this, then that is another simple platform. So that is, uh, it's, and when I say simple, it's very simple. It's, it's, too simple for most workflows that you're going to implement in your business. So it's kind of uh, wrong. It's not if this, then that it's when this, then that that's like how I always explain automations. Like when this happens in one tool, do this thing in another tool. Um, if this, then that stops there. So it's like when this thing happens, you're done. Basically you put it in like, so when the contact form gets submitted, put it in another tool. Uh, an example is I have a um, Google assistant command that when I say add such and such to my Trello, it adds a thing to my Trello. That's, that's the end of if this, then that Zapier uh, can do multi-step workflows and Integramat and there's automate.io, but I haven't played with that much. Um, but then you can sort of expand on these workflows. So it's like when this happens, do this and this, and if these conditions are true, also do this other thing, you know, like it's way more flexible. Um, I don't know how much detail you want me to go into on, on these platforms and automation in general. Uh, to be honest, this is really helpful uh, because it's, at least for me, understanding the context where different things can or should be used is something that kind of helps me understand a mm. massive field like this. But one thing I would like to uh, just kind of check in on is I'm hearing different types of automations here. So we've talked about email automations. We've talked about workflow automations. You've talked about uh, basically what I would call kind of like uh, shortcut or typing automations, mm. which is something that you basically shorten. I'm curious whether there are any other common buckets of automation. Uh, so maybe not the app, but the kind of form of it that are also popular. Yeah. So, I mean, one thing I am big on is just email productivity in general, right. And not living out of your inbox or whatever. So one thing there's like a, a whole other, like a suite of tools that you might use with your email. So an example is Sanebox is a, a tool that I use that helps automate getting non critical emails out of your inbox and into a couple of different folders. So you know, there's a lot of stuff in email, like follow-up reminders, for example, I use followupben.com. Oh yeah. I use those all the time. <laughs> yeah. That like being on top of follow-ups is just one of the best things you can do as a business owner, right? Like that's how, I mean, everything from like a client who hasn't paid an invoice, you, of course you want to follow them up a client that, uh, you've had an initial meeting with and you want to see if they're going to sign a proposal, like, through to like podcast bookings, you know, if I want to go on someone's podcast or someone like a, I'm talking to a potential guest, I want to make sure I follow up with them. So being across follow-ups is just like super important. So that's another thing that can be automated using tools where it's just like, if I don't reply, if that person doesn't reply in five days, bounce the email back to me so I can send another one. Um, it's another pretty big example. Um, so, I guess the categories that I put things in still like they're still some like they, they're still workable with Zapier or Integramat, but they're the categories of like things you should automate. And one of those is just like stuff that you forget do, to do. Um, I, I don't know how, like how far we should go down into this. Rabbit this was hole. actually <laughs> going to be my next question is if uh, right. like me, you, you appreciate this, but aren't really sure where to start uh, or mm. where to go next. So to speak, like we have a number of different things automated in the business, but I know there's more lurking out there. Uh, yeah. And I'm hearing that things that you often forget is a good place to start. Is that well, so this, and you actually specifically mentioned buckets and I like, these are like my four automation buckets as well. Wow. Um, so it's, it's double handling, uh, anything that you're going to move, like, you know, perfect examples, that contact form, we get the, the email address and name it's got to go into our CRM and maybe a different email marketing system. Like if you are handling the same data more than once, it's like, 
no, <laughs> automate that, please. <laughs> uh, number two is excessive email. So uh, like booking times, like that is just insane that there's still people that are like, what time works for you? And, you know, what time zone are you in? Like, I, like what, what days are you free? Oh, that one's not free. Like you end up with this like email storm, just trying to work out a time to book in. Just- oh my gosh. That, that is like, yes, yes. I, or rather no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Like it just blows my mind that there's still people that don't use one. Um, and I mean that, like, that's the thing we could talk about too, just booking links, you know, people might not want to use it because they only want to be available during these like select times. And that doesn't work if they're booking with someone in Australia and if they're in the U S or something, but it's like, I just use two different links. I have a special link for people that might be in a different time zone. And of course I've got a text, text expander shortcut for that. So I don't have to go and get the link and send it to them. <laughs> Absolutely. I I do something similar where, you know, maybe I don't, I used to have two separate, uh, I mean, I have a million different booking links set up for different contexts, but I had one for people who are outside the time zone. But now to be honest, I'll just say, here's my link. Or if you have a link, you would prefer I book through, send it my way. And often between those two, we can Mm -hmm. find something. So it's like, okay, maybe they don't have something within my time, but then I'm willing to look at theirs and figure out a time still better than 10 emails. Yeah. And I also like sending an email exactly like you have said there with saying, uh, you know, or send me your link. Cause it kind of, to me, it can seem a little bit abrupt when it's like, here's my link, book a time, you know, it's like, Oh no, but if you'd prefer I book through your link, I'm totally okay to do that. Right. As long as we get something booked in, but yeah, I'm the same. I have yeah. like 10 different booking links and they're all on different shortcuts. <laughs> so, um, you know, so cause it's crazy. If you, Otherwise, if you don't have those in shortcuts, you have to like copy them out of a document. I know people, I met an automation person that does this. They literally have a list of links and they open up this document and copy the relevant one out. I was like, ah, uh, text expander, you should use that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm a copy person. So I am all about just making them simple and easy to remember following a consistent uh, framework. <laughs> right. So it's always going to be, you know, like content.as.me slash, and then it's going to be yeah. like five letters, super simple. See, I'm I'm too lazy to type all those things before the slash. <laughs> so that would be a shortcut for me. Um, but like, so that's the second bucket. So if we had double handling, the second bucket, excessive email. Another example of that is like, is like the product we made content snare was the, the idea was to try and get the um, process of getting content and information from people is just a pain in the ass, right? Backwards and forwards email. So we built a solution for that. Um, third bucket is repetitive stuff. So like, I mean, this is the main one I would say like uh, where, cause it kind of overlaps a little bit with double handling, right? If you are going to take all the emails from a contact form, put them in your CRM, like you don't want to be doing that over and over again. But um, like any of these kind of things where there can be human error involved too. Like I'm working with a Zapier client right now where they're using HubSpot and it's like a workflow management system, a work management system called Simpro. And it's like, they, if they get new leads in, they have to put them over into this other system. And then when, um, when, a deal stage moves in one system, they need to move the deal stage in another system. You know, this is all like repetitive crap. Like their sales guys were literally having to have both systems open and moving things around, um, doing the same, like that's both double handling and repetitive. Um, but some other things are like in the repetitive bucket are like regular check-ins with clients. Um, you know, and you don't have to go super impersonal just because something um, is like an automated regular check-in, you can do things like um, with Zapier, you could create a draft in uh, Gmail ready for customization, you know, like, and then put in a, a task for you and click up or whatever task management system you're using uh, to like go to that draft and send it. Or, I, um, I don't know if you can hear me typing, but I'm, I'm like literally <laughs> taking notes. <laughs> uh, and, and another great example is Bonjoro. So that's a, a cool little tool for sending uh, like personal videos to people. And so as like when someone signs up uh, to like my Zapier course or to uh, like to a paid account for content snare, I got a little task on this app called Bonjoro. Um, you can use the same thing for um, like regular check-ins, just like if you have, retainer clients and you want to check in once a month or something, the task would pop up on the app. Uh, and then you click it, you record a 30 second video or something and hit send. That's all you have to do. Everything else is automated because you know, I added that oh. task 
That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, you, so you can add the task through Zapier and then Bonjoro will handle the email sending and follow-ups if they don't open it and that kind of thing. So that's like a, another cool example with repetitive things, uh, like any kind of follow-ups. We talked about that already. Um, creating new folder structures for clients. Like if you, when you get a new client on board, like there's always usually a whole lot of stuff in the early stages of a, a project that you're doing over and over again that can deal with automation. Like, I mean, even creating a starter website, like if you build websites for clients and you have like a WordPress install, it's got all your plugins and themes and stuff on it and duplicating that site, like that's a form of automation. Um, so that's bucket three and bucket four is the one I mentioned before is stuff you forget. So this is actually one of my favorites. I think uh, a lot of people don't, you're going to say something. <laughs> I, I was just going to, I was just going to support you there. Stuff I forget to do. It's like, please automate. I only ever want to forget to do it once <laughs> if I can. <laughs> Because mm -hmm. if I forgot it once, I'm going to forget it forever. Yeah. And I mean, th there's a couple of things here too. Like it, it's, it's stuff you forget and stuff that you just kind of avoid doing because it's a pain in the ass, you know, like for example, Me never. <laughs> <laughs> like a, a good example of this is like, uh, like project management activity at the end of the day, you might want to see how, like what's been done across your team for that, for that day. Right. But it means you've got to go to your project management system and have a look through and pull up reports and stuff. And like, I'm just not going to remember to do that. Right. So a great example of an automation is to uh, like in Zapier, you can use a tool called digest, which basically creates a list of something that's happened, like lots of things that have happened. So you could say when a task is marked off, in project management, add it to my list. At the end of the day, drop that whole list into my personal like task management, you know? So, cause I live out of my task management and I, I'm a big fan of having that kind of setup. So it's own the only two things, my like Bible or whatever is, um, is task management and uh, my inbox, right? So the inbox is only select times, everything else, everything comes into that task management. So if I know what I got to work on next, it's there. So for in this case, you know, it's like check on what happened today in project management. A task is just pops up at a certain time of the day to say, this is everything that was marked off today. So I can see what's been happening. Um, so that's a, a cool example. Um, new leads, like checking new leads that have come into, come into the business. Um, this is one of my favorite actually, uh, because <laughs> I, you can use a tool like, um, I don't know if you, have you heard of lead school, uh, sorry, lead enrichment before? Lead enrichment. No, yes. I had heard of, I've heard <laughs> of lead scoring, which you were about to say, but not yeah. lead enrichment. Yeah. So Zapier called their lead enrichment tool lead score, which is wrong. Um, <laughs> it's lead enrichment is getting more data about a person just based on their email address. So Clearbit is a tool that does this. It's like a hundred bucks a month. Um, but there's a sort of basic one built into Zapier, but it's Clearbit's insane. If you just want to like see how much data people have, like they have on you, just go to clearbit.com slash attributes. And um, you can see a list of all, like just from an email address, they can get like company Twitter handle, uh, company Twitter bio and like personal Twitter bio and LinkedIn address and like, what kind of city they live in, how many staff work there, uh, <laughs> like GDP of that area. Wow. Like, <laughs> it's crazy. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just insane. So I, this is an example of how I use this exact same like digest tool is we have a lot of people signing up for content snare, right? And they might range from freelancer to like a really large company. And so when everyone signs up, they go through this lead enrichment filter that finds out uh, it's called lead score by Zapier is the one that's built into Zapier. And it'll give you how many staff that company have, which is a pretty good indication of how much they stand to benefit from content snare and how like obviously a bigger client probably going to pay more money. Um, so I have two filters based on that. And if they are say 10 to 20 people, uh, it puts them in a digest, which shows up in my task management at the end of the day. So I can see today we had, I just have to scan through, might be like five companies of this size that have signed up. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't have to go into my CRM and go, okay, who signed up today? Do I recognize any of those? How big are those companies? You know, like it's literally just there in my task management. Okay, cool. And I have another filter that's like, if they're greater than, say a hundred staff notify me immediately 
because I want to get on that. They're like, they've just signed up yeah. for a trial. <laughs> and, and you want to be talking to them. Yeah. Right. And I landed um, a massive client using this, right? Like um, they're one of the top 10 airlines in the world, which, you know, kind of probably struggling right now, but um, they were literally in the system trying it out. And I got a notification to say they'd signed up. So when I fired up live chat, they were just there and, you know, now they're a paying client. So that is just, I don't know. That's a cool automate. It's one of my favorites. Uh, so simple. It's literally like if they have more than this many staff notify me, you know? Well, yeah, I, I already have, yeah, I already have things going through my brain about how we could use and implement something like that. Uh, I immediately want to have my, uh, like a, we are our chief of admin, Kevin is our like tech systems guy. And he's the one who's like really like salivates mm-hmm. over this stuff. And I'm like, Oh man, I got to make him listen to this episode. Yeah. <laughs> Be chief of ops too. Um, Awesome. Okay. So that, that was exactly what I wanted to know. Thank you. Those four buckets for me, I'm a huge fan of, uh, you know, like high level processes to help us kind of organize information, uh, in our brains. So, Mm -hmm. but I'd like to get into more kind of applying this kind of stuff. So I'm curious, what are the most common mistakes that you notice digital agency leaders making or digital people, uh, making when they try to start automating and get into it? Like what are those kind of things you're like, uh, uh, but you see them all the time. Um, really the main thing is just not doing it. Like a lot of agency owners just try to throw people at the problem. Mm. If that's so not, it's not even so much in a mistake with automation. It's like, you know, if you have these repetitive tasks, it's pretty easy to go and hire a VA or like another person to do the work. And like, mm. I don't think anyone really wants to do that kind of work. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's repetitive, boring stuff. And to me that like, that is the absolute number one thing. Like I spoke to a student of my Zapier course who his literal other option. It was like, what, if you didn't get the course, what was your other option? And it was like, go and hire a VA. And I was like, oh, wow. Like that is, yeah. Like that's exactly that's what a big I, gap. I, yeah. VA, yeah. like we do a lot of episodes around like hiring and all sorts of things and building a team and mm. bringing on a new person is massive. Even if it's just a VA, you know, it, it's a lot of work finding them, training them. Set, you have to set up the processes anyway. You might as well be mm. setting up the processes in a system that automates it for you. Yeah. But, but when it comes to the actual automations itself, the biggest thing is just not thinking big enough. I'd say like most people sort of stop it at that. When this happens, do this. Like they're moving Zapier to most people is a tool that just moves data around. It's, you know, if someone signs up, put them in this other system or create a project in my project management system. And they kind of leave it at that. Whereas, you know, you can, you know, if you're doing lots and lots of different steps, you can create some pretty crazy workflows. Like even that one before where it was just like, look up someone. I think a lot of people don't realize you can look up people in other systems or whatever and get data back and like then put it in another system. So in that case, it was email address comes in, look up that person in a lead enrichment system. Uh, If, greater than 20 staff do this different thing, you know, like when you actually start thinking about complex workflows, your world opens up so much and there are so many different things you can automate. So what do you think holds people back? Like, why do you think people Mm. turn to hiring other people, even though it's a giant bag of poop uh, a lot of the time (laughs) instead of automations? Well, one thing, I mean, it's not knowing where to start, not understanding what's possible. Yes. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing by far. So where do you start with automation? It's like, it's a huge, big world of different possibilities. It's like, you know, and that's overwhelming. As soon as, as soon as something's overwhelming, people just don't want to borrow of it. And then the, I guess the result of that is the amount of time that's required to learn and set it up. That's always the barrier. It's, it's, it's like so ridiculous that we're too busy to save time. Mm. That's kind of, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One of those weird things, just like there's no amount of work humans will not do in order to avoid work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's kind of, well, <laughs> you could almost say automations that I go way overboard and do a lot of work to avoid work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I love it to me. It's like not even work, but yeah, it's, it's, those are the two biggest things. It's the initial upfront investment and, and not knowing where to start now the easiest way to get over the initial time investment, although agencies are still going to say, look, I'm just way too busy right now to do this. But the thing is, if you don't start doing it, you're always going to be too busy. Right. 
I look at it like investment. So investment of money, for example, you put mm. some money away, you make 10%, whatever it is a year, <laughs> obviously not right now. <laughs> um, but you know, it, it, over time it pays back the money you put into it kind of thing is, is very, very basic overview. I see it like that with time. If you spend an hour creating a workflow that saves you five minutes a week, five minutes doesn't sound like much, right? But after 12 weeks, that's your 60 minutes back. And every uh, week after that is five minutes free. But if you've done this like a load of times, like I have, our Zapier account saves me, like it's around a hundred hours a month. If you wow. do, you know, like- Wow, and if you were hiring someone for a hundred hours a month, that would be multiple full-time jobs. That would be, no, wait, no. no uh, it's just, just under a week, not a month. Right? 120, right? <laughs> yeah, a, no, that's no. a whole full-time job. That's a whole 60. salary you would have to be paying. Yeah. And, and that's just me, you know, like it's not even the team, the, like, so there's just so much uh, like capability to save time there. And, uh, yeah, I just don't think people should write it off cause it's only like, you know, you might only save five minutes with this thing, but it adds up. And later on, you're going to thank, you know, past self <laughs> for setting all this stuff up. <laughs> So the other question, you know, people don't know where to start. It's overwhelming. Uh, where would you recommend people start? Yeah. So um, specifically Zapier, go to zapier.com and they've got a couple of tabs across the top. They may have changed the names on this, but it's apps and explore. And you can literally just dig around in there. And so what I would uh, recommend is going to the app screen and searching for the app, like an app that you use. So the easiest, so basically the easiest way to start is with the apps that you're already using. So you go there, you search for an app that you're using. If you're using teamwork, I know you're a fan of teamwork. You know, you go there, type in teamwork, scroll through that page and see what's possible. The most um, cool part of that page is right down the bottom. There's a bit where it explains the triggers and actions that you can use for that specific tool. So if it's, um, I don't have teamwork in front of me, but I'm going to assume there are triggers for like when a new project's created or when a new client's created, uh, and in actions, they might be create project, create task, all this kind of stuff, right? If you read through that and you actually will start building up a picture of what kind of things can be done in that specific app. And now you do the same thing with your CRM you can start joining the dots and, and working out where your opportunities for automations are. There is actually on Zapier as well, there's an explore tab, which allows you to like tick different options on or off. So you could tick on teamwork, you could tick on Google sheets and whatever else, Slack, for example, and it'll give you some zap recipes or workflow recipes. Honestly, you'll outgrow that really quick because the examples are so, so basic, um, but they should at least give you an idea of some workflows that are possible. Um, the main thing though, is like literally thinking about those parts of your business that are repetitive, like with the buckets we talked about before, the repetitive stuff and, and double handling and just seeing if that's possible. You know, if you're moving from um, a contact form to your CRM, you go and you look for that contact form in Zapier and see if there's an integration and you go to uh, your CRM and you look what integrations there are there and go, okay, we can connect these. It's, it's really that simple and start playing, like actually go and create a Zap and see if you can make it work. I, I guarantee you'll be able to set something up. Like it, I guess it kind of scares people in a way because it's a technical thing if you're non-technical, but it's pretty simple. When you're in there, you know, especially if you start with one of those little recipes, obviously you can get super complex as well, but you know, that's a whole other <laughs> rabbit Start hole. simple, but I'm hearing start yeah. simple. Start by just making something work, getting excited about it. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, as you go on thinking bigger, you know, you mentioned that you don't think that people think big enough when it comes to these automations. So I'm curious, do you have a like exciting story? Like what's the most time you've ever saved with a zap, with a single Oof. zap or what's the biggest zap you've ever made? Tell us something exciting. Oh, geez. Uh, put me on the spot here. <laughs> Man, I've got so many zaps. It's like my account is just full. I just had to upgrade to like the, I don't know what plan it is, like the team plan or something. Cause I'm like way over my limits, but um, <laughs> I, you know, for example, one of my favorites is the podcast, right? Like, so when someone 
a lot of people that I know run a podcast talk about how much time they invest in, in running a podcast. And to me, it's like, actually most of my process is automated, right? So when someone books in, that's pretty much the last I think about it until right before we actually chat. And that's because when they book in, I ask for some questions uh, and, and a few bits of data. They fill out like a guest info form. Um, what I haven't done is automatically chase them up if they don't go and fill out that guest info form. Um, but that's another thing I need to do. But it will actually create a Google document out of what they uh, answer, right? So then that becomes my run sheet for that episode. The episode number's there, um, like the questions that we're going to go through, um, a spot for notes. It's all there. It's just a, a document that's ready to go. It gets a link from that and puts it in my, in my Trello, my task management. So it's like ready to go when I just before I go to the episode, I literally open it up and bam, I um, open that link. Um, what else does it do? It uh, follow puts a reminder in my Trello afterwards to follow up with, with the guest for um, to get the, the audio file from them. Uh, and then when it goes live, it, it creates another draft email for me to send to them with like shareable links in it. So they can just literally click on a thing and it'll share it on Facebook. Like <laughs> oh, I'm definitely having my people listen to this episode in particular. <laughs> yeah. I, I, so I did lie there. There is a second, there's a second workflow involved in that when it goes live, uh, you could kind of build it into one, but it makes more sense to just go like follow the RSS feed of when it goes live. Um, but yeah, like we're just talking like many, many steps there, you know, I think it automatically, actually when it goes live, it automatically shares it on all my social channels and, um, and, and queues it up for my weekly newsletter as well. So I have a weekly newsletter where all my content goes and, um, you know, it gets it ready for that. So, so what do you mean gets it ready and cues it okay. up? Like, does it put it into a template? Does it give you notes? Like what? I'm, I'm glad you asked uh, because like, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's how much detail you want to go into and all these things. It's just like, you know, we can go down all these rabbit holes, but in, in short, um, my newsletter follows RSS feeds and in Zapier, you can create your own RSS feed. So I can build an RSS feed out of my blog out of um, like, cause I got, well, there's three websites that we, we have one of them being the podcast, all of that gets filtered into an RSS feed along with um, so like good articles that I found throughout the week. So I use an extension called push by Zapier, which uh, it literally just sits there at the top of Chrome. You click it and it opens a box and I type in the box and it sends the text that I typed in and the current website that I'm on. So I'm using that as a social sharing thing. It's like, this is a cool post that I found during the week. I type in my commentary uh, and not that also goes to all my social platforms, but it also gets pulled into that same RSS feed that my newsletter looks at. So it's a combination of all the cool articles I found that week, my podcast and our blogs. And then it's the Zizi just dragging and dropping that into our newsletter. <laughs> Dang that. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> That's this is pretty the thing. Cool. Yeah. Like there's just so much stuff. Like when you get down this rabbit hole and like, you know, to a point it's, it's to a point now where every time I go to do something new in my business, it's like, okay, where are the opportunities for automation in this? Like, so I don't have to continually remember to do this every Tuesday or something, you know, like, and it just makes life a lot easier. Mm. Now, one of the things I want to point out that's really jumping out to me about uh, your approach to automation is that you're making automation work within the way that you work rather than vice versa. Like I'm hearing this about, you know, the articles and stuff. It sounds like this saves you time, not just because there's an automation set up, but because you're already looking up these articles and thinking about commentary and et cetera in this particular case. So it's uh, basically what I'm getting out of this is Yes, dig around in Zapier, et cetera. But I love these buckets because it's like, what are you actually doing throughout mm -hmm. your day? What are you actually forgetting consistently? What's actually kind of falling through the cracks and building it around that instead of just building automations for the sake of automations. Now, obviously that yeah. has grown, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, I like that kind of people or process first uh, mentality. Yeah. And I guess it changes the way you approach finding like new like marketing opportunities and, and things you want to do in your business. Right. So when I knew that I wanted to send a newsletter, I was looking for something that would 
import from RSS because I know that I can build an RSS feed in Zapier, you know, so that, that becomes a critical feature. Like th that's why knowing what's possible and actually mucking around inside these tools is so important because it changes the way you plan things. So I needed a tool that could import from RSS. I, um, and I needed something that like, then I could, all I wanted to do is like write a blurb at the start of the newsletter and drag and drop these things in. Um, uh, you know, and then I was looking for tools for saving uh, the articles that I wanted to share. So I was looking at Feedly. It's like, can I write a, um, a, a blurb in Feedly and then have that automatically come over to Zapier? It was like, it was kind of possible. And then I discovered Push by Zapier. Like it was exactly what I was looking for to write a commentary about the article that I'm currently on. But there's a lot of ways to skin that cat. You know, there's all these different bookmarking tools that allow you to write a commentary and then you could pull that into your RSS feed. So it, my point is, it just, once you know what's possible, you actually find the tools to that have the integrations and allow you to do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So once again, starting from, you know, understanding what sort of relationships are possible and kind of the, the thinking yeah. creative framework and then finding the tools rather than starting with the tool and finding a way to like jam that hole into whatever shape. <laughs> yeah. Hole. Yeah. yeah that's jam right. that peg yeah. into whatever shape hole. <laughs> yeah. And I find that's actually really common. I'm glad you mentioned that because I see, an over-reliance on um, built-in integrations. This is to circle back to one of your biggest mistakes. Uh, sorry, the biggest mistakes I see people making, I feel is people's obsession with built-in integrations. It's like they only want to use a um, accounting tool that has a direct integration with their project management, which limits you so much. And not only, you know, then they're like, oh, it doesn't have the, an integration with this random obscure CRM that I'm using. Therefore, I can't use it. So I've got to use this other crappy tool that does. Um, the, not only are you limiting by that, like it's even if you do use a built-in integration, half the time they're forcing you into whatever that integration is. Like, for example, if you have a, um, a, a CRM to accounting tool integration and there is, it maps in the client's name and their email address and their company name, but you've got six custom fields and they don't work with custom fields. You know, you're screwed immediately, but it's like, oh, we've just got to deal with that because that's the built-in integration. I see this all the time. And that, that, that even though that was like the criteria they wanted for signing up for this tool, even though I oh, will just leave it because it doesn't have it. If they've got a Zapier integration, you map all those bloody custom fields through. You do whatever you want. Like if you have the ability to build in automations with an external tool like Zapier, because there are people that don't like using external tools. And to me, that's just a massive mistake because now you've got a, you don't have that data all in, all in the spot that you want it because you relied on an, like, you don't want to rely on Zapier, which is just rubbish. Um, it's like the, it's robust as I've been like my whole business runs on this bloody thing. So it's, I just find the flexibility you get through an external workflow tool like Zapier um, is just, it just makes it so much better, it, better than built in integrations a lot of the time. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It might feel uh, a little bit clunkier to kind of get into Zapier and understand what the different fields are and how they're pulling. Mm -hmm. I have, despite my kind of joking around, I have actually used Zapier quite a bit and set up some automations. Nice. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I've definitely found the same thing. I mean, I too am drawn to the like sometimes, you know, nicer UI or that fancy little icon in, you know, Teamwork or whatever app that's like, mm -hmm. ooh, connect with this other app. But inevitably, like we are just such process driven people that having to force ourselves into the crappy process of a tool that doesn't work for us mm -hmm. in order to make that connection uh, has, yeah, just makes it a lot more uh, unappealing or challenging for us. Uh, and thankfully, you know, uh, I have found that even though Zapier is not perfect, uh, exactly what you've said, if you can pick tools that actually work for you and maybe finagle them a little bit more or see what that third party integration service can do mm. to make them work together, that's going to be a lot more valuable than just, uh, you know, working with what you have and cringing every single time, uh, which ultimately causes you more time and stress. I'm hearing. Boom. Yeah. You absolutely nailed it. Like, that's the thing. It's like, it's just so many times I've been in that situation where I, I mean, maybe it's cause I'm an automation guy, but I set up an integration and it like, it creates the client in like this different way. And I'm like, damn it, that's not how I want it. But it's like, there are people that will just go, you know what? That's it. That's how it is. We'll, we'll adjust our process to do it like that. When it's like, no, you can, if, if they've got a decent Zapier integration, uh, which is becoming more and more important for apps to have uh, because everyone uses Zapier, <laughs> um, then you can, 
you know, you create a client in like a different, I, I, I'm thinking of an example here with a client of mine where there's a, a uh, they can create customers as a company customer or an individual customer and the built-in integration will only create the individual customer but they really wanted it to create a company customer. I know like it just seems a silly distinction, but like they would have had to just make that their process and go in and edit and do like a, a bunch of shit to convert them. Basically what you were saying, which is like touching it more than once and yeah. uh, doing repetitive stuff, which except double handling, that's what it was in repetitive stuff. Yeah. And, you know, even though they've got an automation, a built-in automation, they're still double handling, you know? So instead you use Zappy to just do it right the first time. Makes sense. And I'm hearing that, uh, you know, how to maybe check whether your automations are as good as they could be. Are you still doing anything in these buckets? Do you still have excessive email? Are you still doing repetitive stuff? If so, maybe your automation uh, needs a little, needs a little adjustment or work. Yeah. And I mean, not everything is automatable like that. That's common pushback. And, you know, it's like, things, some things should be more personalized. I think there's a whole, another topic here on like automation assisted personalization. So what I was talking about before with Bonjoro, you know, it's a great example where like everything around it's automated, but I'm still sending a personal video. Uh, things like creating draft emails in Gmail ready to send um, with most of it populated, but then you can, uh, you know, update it. Edit things a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. A the, ton the, of mess. Like we're, I feel like we're human automate. Like we have a lot of people who like human automate things, which I guess makes it not automated at all in the mm. sense that we have it all written down. We have the process and system, but it's still mm. a human who's moving things around. Yeah. Um, but, and sometimes that is still necessary. Like with the podcast, for example, the audio editing phase of our thing, like that's, it's not automated. That, um, that's a human. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and there's always going to be those things. Uh, but you, again, like with that, we can move the file into a Google drive folder with automation that a let's phonic pick up exactly where that is. So a person can go in and just select the file, choose the filters or whatever, and then it's done. So there are, you know, parts, you're always going to find parts that you can't automate. It's just like, working around those and automating everything else to make it easier for the person that is doing that job. Mm, I love it. And once again, kind of in that order of people first, then the process, then the tool to kind of support that and automate everything in between. Mm. It's great. <laughs> awesome. I'm going to wind us down with our lightning round here. So first question, what is it other than coffee, which I know you said you're not drinking right now <laughs> that gets you up in the morning? Uh, you know, I think it is just, <laughs> I could say an alarm clock, but I'm sure everyone's made that joke before. Um, you know, I don't know what motivates me anymore. I really just like getting up and, and solving problems, I guess, is the thing that really I enjoy, which is why I'm into automation so much, right? Cause everything is just a problem. Um, but that's why I'm in SAS too and software, right? Like, um, solving problems for people to save time. That's really what it comes down to. I guess that's the same with my Zapier of course. It's like when you see the feedback of people saving all this time, like that gives me such a massive kick. So yeah, it's a few answers there, but. <laughs> <laughs> but I think still very clear and succinct. All right. What is the number one thing that you do to preserve your wellness? Um, throw heavy things around, I'd say. By that, I just mean like gym, which we can't do right now, but. Uh, the, the heavy thing that I throw around is myself uh, through body weight exercises. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of people in the online business space tend to let their health uh, go by, especially in agency world. You know what? Agencies definitely seem to be worse than most of online business uh, where because I think there's overworked. a culture of it straight up. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like, and I feel like it doesn't take that much time to, stay healthy. You know, you've only like, I do, I currently do four workouts a week. I used to be three and I was still reasonably healthy. Um, you know, maybe an hour in the gym three times a week enabled me to have a lot of beer on the weekends, um, and not feel bad. <laughs> it's all the balance, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think, um, weight training is, is like underrated by a lot of people too. Cause it's just like, there's so many benefits in like, you know, bone density and like just not falling apart as a human being <laughs> as mm. you get older. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's powerful. All right. Uh, did you want to tell the audience how they can find out more about you? Maybe more about your Zapier course where they can check out anything else you might have for them. Yeah, sure. Well, the Zapier course, let's start with that. Um, 
Yeah, you got you got to say Zapier right there. You can't say Zapier. They'll get mad Zapier. At you. I'll just blame it on my Canadianism. <laughs> Zapier, like, like happier. Niche. <laughs> they yeah right, uh, but they totally spelled it wrong. Like of course, when you read it, it says it reads as Zapier. Like that's if you look at it right, but. Uh, you make zaps in it. Make you make zaps. Those. Yes. That makes yeah. sense. Zapier. I also yeah. like the zapier happier. That's like, they, they don't lean into that enough in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So I have a course that teaches people how to use zapier, including where to start, how to identify, you know, opportunities for automation in your business. But then we talk about like the basic stuff through to the advanced, like that's the key here is like starting out with simple, like the contact form example, and then heading through to like crazy stuff that most Zapier people don't even know is possible. And that's all at jimmyrose.me. Uh, yeah. There's a Zapier course link in the header and content snare is our product for getting content from clients, streamlining that onboarding process. You know, people use it for questionnaires and website content, marketing content, documents, whatever. Uh, yeah. And that's at contentsnare.com. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you, Jimmy. This has been super valuable, super nerdy, but nerdy in all the best ways, which is like telling you how to, you know, save more time and be less stressed, uh, which is, yeah, my favorite kind of nerdiness. Thanks again. <laughs> no worries at all. I love sharing this stuff. Thank you so much for having me say. Ah. Excellent. All right. And to everybody listening, go check out Jimmy's stuff. Uh, I know I'm going to be clicking right after this call <laughs> to find that Zapier course uh, so that someone on my team uh, can explore it because I still feel really overwhelmed by this. Anyway, as always, you know, I hope that all of you guys out there listening have an excellent rest of your day. And if you are having a crappy day, I hope you can take a moment to just create a little bit of joy for yourself, even if it's just a moment. Take care.